Hi there! So originally I was going to make this into a single video, but it turned out that the video was going to be about 20 minutes long, so I figured that I'd break it up into two parts. This is where we go through and solder the ESP32 onto the breakout board and correct some mistakes that we make along the way. So I hope you enjoy it! Hi there! So what we'll be doing today is to take our ESP32 in the form of the ESPWROOM02 module and we'll be soldering that onto this breakout board so we can use it off of our breadboard. So first I'll take this ESP32 module out of its little packaging and take a look at the module itself. Peels right off and the module comes out. So here's the module itself. Of course we're all familiar with the can on this side and we see that the pins are on all three sides of the module. Looking at the back side, we can see that all the pins are labeled and that we have a ground pad right over here. So what we're going to have to do, and this is going to be a little bit of a challenging part, we're going to have to get this ground pad soldered onto the ground pad of the breakout board as well. This might not be very difficult if we actually had reflow equipment and soldering paste and such, but since I only have a soldering iron and some solder, I'm going to have to somehow get the module onto the breakout board without having to rely on using a heat gun and soldering paste and such so that we can actually properly reflow onto there. So well, let's get right into it. So first of all, she mentioned that I actually had a chance to do this beforehand and found out a few things about this arrangement. So I really didn't know what the best way would be to get this ground pad connected to the ground pad on the breakout board. So at first what I tried doing was put some solder on the module and heat it from the other side of the breakout board. So this side of the breakout board, there's some openings over here. So I was trying to get the heat from this side onto the solder that I pre-soldered on here and hope that it would flow on correctly. But that turned out to be more problematic than I initially hoped because the heat just didn't get to there very well. And eventually I figured out that in the process of trying to get the solder or actually trying to heat the pad from here, I noticed that the solder was getting sucked into these holes. And I guess that was happening because of capillary action. So I figured that, oh, I really don't have to put any solder on here at all. So I just took it off with some solder wick and I actually tried to apply solder through the holes over here. And it seemed like it was fine because I was able to actually make an electrical connection, which I could verify with a continuity check of a multimeter. That's basically the method we'll be taking today. All right, so just as a preparation step, I'm gonna put some flux onto the ground pad of the module and the pads of the breakout board so that flux will be able to flow onto it a little easier. So I'll go ahead and put some flux on the ground pad of the ESP32 and the ground pad of the breakout board along with all the pads of the GPIO port as well. I'm just going to put a little more on there because I don't think the first pass was going to be enough. Hopefully that will be enough. Alright, so the next step I'm going to have to put the module onto the breakout board. Here I'm just going to go ahead and Put it on here and align the pins on the module to the pins on the breakout board or the pads on the breakout board. So then I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it down so that the module and the breakout board will stick together and the alignment of the pins and pads don't get misaligned. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Alright, the module onto the breakout board. Okay, looks well aligned. So I'm going to tape down the module and the breakout board to this surface so it doesn't move around while I'm applying solder to the pins. Alright, so that kind of looks good. Alright, so now we can actually solder the module onto the breakout board. So at this time, I'm going to turn the fume extractor on because I don't want to be breathing in all those leaded-based solder fumes. And we should be ready to go. 
All right, so the approach I'm gonna take is basically, I'm going to be soldering the pins to the pads first on both sides. And by doing that, the module should no longer be moving around anymore. Too well. Okay, that didn't work too well. As you can see, I ended up bridging some of these pins over here. I'm going to be fixing that in a bit. Yeah. Ended up bridging those two as well. That's not good. All right, I'll get around to that later. So I guess I'll do the other side now. You know, what I found out was that when I try to do this on video, it usually doesn't work out really well, but when I when I do it off video, it really works out really nicely. It's just the way it goes. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna have to fix up these soldering connections using probably some solder wick as well. Guess I'll be doing that now. Touching it up can fix some of those, but the other ones need a little bit of help. Unfortunately, the board is floating a little bit. We'll see if I can give it a try. Anyway, next. Despite the board being a little bit floating, I think the connections were able to be made by soldering, so it should be okay. Of course, we can verify this later by using the continuity test on the multimeter. Sometimes moving a soldering iron like that can uh, re-establish the connections cleanly, but of course that really has to deal with the temperature of the module and the tip of the soldering iron for that to work out really well. That's what I was kind of hoping would happen over on these sides, but to no avail, so I have to clean it up a little bit. All right, that concludes part one of the video. In the second part, we're gonna be continuing to do some soldering with some occasional mistakes, and we'll be fixing those up, and finally doing some ground pad soldering after that, we'll do some continuity checks to be sure the module's in good shape. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.